Hello students, how are you all? Hope you all are healthy and fine. Today we will going to begin our chapter 2 that is log on to MS Excel. Before forwarding to the chapter, I would like to tell you something. It always seems impossible unless it is done. What do you mean by this? That unless and until you will not going to complete anything, unless and until you will not going to touch any work, how you will come to know that that is hard work or this is very simple work. So, try to complete the work and nothing is impossible in this world as you all know it. So, all try to work on it. Now, forwarding to a chapter 2 that is log on to MS Excel. Introduction Microsoft Excel is a popular spreadsheet component of a Microsoft Office suit. What is Microsoft Office suit? Microsoft uh, Soft Office suit is the package of the products produced by the Microsoft company. So, Microsoft Excel is also one of the product which is produced by the Microsoft company. Second, Microsoft Excel allows you to store, organize, calculate and manipulate the valuable data. When you will going to store anything, any value, when you were going to store any data, it helps you to calculate. You can do the calculations on that data. You can manipulate that data. You can change the values of the data and then again you can calculate the values. A spreadsheet is like a grid consisting of rows and the columns. I have shown you in the last chapter also that spreadsheet is a sheet that contains columns and rows. And where the columns and rows coincide, that is called a cell, which is in a tabular form. Tabular form means it is in the form of a table. Small, small cells are there. In that cells, we use to write our data. It provides built-in feature tools such as formulas, functions and data analysis tools that make it easier to work with large amount of data. You can do the calculations very easily. You can analyze the data very easily because there is already built in functions. There are already formulas which help you to do analysis very easily. It has an additional feature of representing data in the chart form. I have shown you on that day when I, we were reading the features of the spreadsheet software we have seen the uh, data in the form of a chart that makes the data easy to understand it is used to automate financial statements carry out transactions of accounts payable or received and organize business plans of any company spreadsheets are also used by the companies to take out the transactions how much income they are having how much money they are giving to the employees what is the saving of the company this all can be easily calculated with the help of the ms excel now we will going to study some of the features of ms excel So, first feature is add header and footer. We can add the header and the footer in the MS Excel sheet. How? What is header and footer? We can give a heading to one MS Excel sheet that can be used in all the sheets. As many sheets you will use, that heading can be in all the sheets. And what is footer? If you write anything in the bottom of the sheet, in the foot of the sheet, that will be there in the sheet, all the sheets.
find and replace command. MS Excel allows you to find the needed data in the workbook and also replace the existing data. You can find any word in the MS Excel document and you can replace with any other word if you want to replace it. Easily with the help of the find and replace command, you need not to type every time, you need not to search every time this word. You have to just apply find and replace command. The command is itself saying find the word and replace with another word. Password protection. You can give the password to your workbook so that no other user can use your workbook. Data filtering. It makes your data easily. Analysis. This feature makes your data analysis very easily. Now there are two types of the filtering ranges. With the help of the, these two commands, we can filter our data very easily. First is auto, auto filter, which makes filter by selection. You can select any area, you can select any range of the cells and then you can apply the auto filter there. For more complex criteria, if the Calculations are very complex. If there is something very complex written, you can apply the advanced filter there. Next, we are having data sorting. It is the process of arranging data in some logical order. You can arrange your data in the logical order. Either you can arrange it in descending order, you can arrange it in ascending order, you can arrange the uh, data in A to Z, you can arrange your data in Z to A. These all are the formats you are having in the data sorting orders. Built-in formula. It has the built-in formula for sum. You need not to write the plus sign again and again. There is a formula already given sum. You have to just define from where till where you have want to calculate the sum. And then you can use your sum, average, minimum, maximum, these formulas can be used as per our needs in the MS Excel. Different charts, pivot table report. MS Excel allows you to create different charts such as you can create the bar graph, you can create the pie charts, you can create the line graphs. This helps you to analyze and compare the data very easily. Uh, nowadays you can see in the even on the news channels they used to show you the areas where the COVID rate is high with the help of the MX Excel they used to calculate they can draw that chart and they can show you very easily and what is the use of it the with the help of these charts you can analyze the data very easily automatically edits the result you can edit the result very easily you can change the result very easily if you want to make any changes in the cell you can do it very easily formula auditing we can graphically display or trace the relationship between cells and the formulas with blue rows with the help of the rows you can you can trace the relationship between the cells and the formulas we can trace the precedence the cells that provide a data to a specific cell or the dependence, the cell that depend on the value in the specific cell. If you provide any data from the cell, that is called the precedent. And if any cell is dependent on any other cell, that is called the dependence of the cell. This is called the formula auditing. Now, how to start the MS Excel sheet? Click on the start button. First of all, click on the start button. Move your pointer over the program option. Open the Microsoft Office option. Click on the Microsoft Office Excel. This is, we are talking about the 2007. And how to open the Excel in 2010, I have shown you on that day. Click on the start button. Click on the Microsoft Office from there and take the Microsoft Excel from there and you can open a new workbook. 
when excel has started a new blank page is titled when you will going to click on the new blank page you can see the title of the book will be book 1 excel is open automatically now we will going to study the components of the ms excel window first is the title bar it is located on the top of the window which gives you the file name of the program on which you are currently working it tells you the name of your file and it is present at the top of the ms excel window second menu bar has the words home insert page layout references mailings review and view across the top on the top below the title bar you can see there is one menu bar on which all the tabs are there that is home tab insert tab page layout tab references tab mailing tab review tab all these tabs are present that row is called a menu bar each of these tabs open up to into own ribbon when you click on them to show you further options when you will going to click on these any of the tab that will going to show you the different options different commands which are under that tab next is ribbon rows of buttons that perform various action used in creating and editing your document on the top whole ribbon is there that is having the functions to perform like editing you can create your document you can edit any document in the ribbon ruler ruler you can simply say it is a scale that is present on the margins you can use the ruler to set the tabs indents and margins you can set how much indentation you want how much spacing you want how much margin you want that all you can set with the help of the ruler now scroll bars it is located on the light, right side of the bottom of the screen on the bottom of the screen above the zoom tool you can see there is a scroll bar by clicking on the arrows at the end of the scroll bar you can move up and down or left and right through your document if you want to move your document up left right left up down right left anywhere you want you can use these scroll bars to scroll bars to move into your ms excel document microsoft office button this is present only in office 2007 it is not present this button is not present in 2010 it is located on the upper left hand corner those who are working in office 2007 they can see this microsoft office button it is the menu button where you will find new open print etc these all are the commands that are present in the microsoft office button how to create a new workbook this is they have shown you in the figure also you can click on the new and you can click on the blank workbook when you are going to click on the blank workbook you will be able to see a new document is there an excel document is called a workbook a workbook always has at least one worksheet at least one worksheet will be there on which you can work how to create a new workbook to create a new workbook click on the file tab the backstage view will appear if you want to create a new workbook these are the options these are the steps that you have to follow you have to click on the file tab after that click on the new after that choose the blank workbook from there and from after that click on the create button when you will going to create click on the create button you can see your new workbook there now what is the difference between a worksheet and a workbook we're going to see what is the difference between both of them worksheet and workbook worksheet first of all an excel worksheet is a single spreadsheet that contains cells organized into rows and columns it is a single spreadsheet 
that is having all the rows and the columns a workbook is an excel file that contains at least one or more worksheets workbook is a part of a ms excel that is having one or the more worksheets a worksheet begins with a row number 1 and column a in a worksheet all the columns are defined by the letters a b and c and all the rows are defined by 1 2 3 4 and so on a workbook each of the workbook worksheets are in separate tabs on the bottom of the excel window on the bottom of the excel windows you can see sheet tabs are there on which number of the sheets are there sheet 1 sheet 2 sheet 3 sheet 4 and so on each cell can contain a number text or a formula you can either enter a number text formula special symbols whatever you want to add you can add, enter into the cell by default a new excel workbook will contain three worksheets when you will going to open a workbook that will going to have at least three worksheets or at least one worksheet you can switch between these worksheets by clicking on the sheet tabs and you can click on the move from one sheet to the another worksheet a cell can also refer another cell in the same worksheet the same workbook or a different workbook the cell can take one cell can take the value from the another cell in a worksheet you can switch between the worksheets by clicking on the worksheet tab from one worksheet to another worksheet in a excel window a cell can also refer another cell in a same worksheet the same workbook or a different workbook in excel 2010 the maximum size of the worksheet is 1048576 rows and the columns are 16384 in excel 2010 the number of the worksheets in a workbook is limited only by your computer's available memory as much as memory you are having in your computer you can open the number of the worksheets in a workbook these all are the differences we are having between the worksheet and a workbook now what is a cell a cell is a rectangular box that occurs at the intersection of a row and a column where the column and a row coincide that rectangular box small rectangular box is called a cell now what is a cell address each cell has a name i have told it this thing in the last cl class also last chapter also each cell is having a different name that is based on the row and a column you can see If I talk about this three hundred, where three hundred is written, you can see my pointer. Where three hundred is written, and this cell is highlighted. That is called the active cell, where there is a boundary. That is called an active cell, and you can see the name of the cell is cell address is C five, which is defined in the name box. C is the column name, and five is the row number. so every cell is having a defined or a unique cell address the cell address of a selected cell appears in the name box whichever cell you will select that will going to show that will going to give the address in the name box here you can see that c5 cell is selected you can see that c5 cell is selected and in excel 2010 there are 17 179 869 and 184 cells in one worksheet these are the total number of the cells in one worksheet means ye chote chote column these small columns how many columns are there this much of the columns we are having in a worksheet of a 2010 this is i'm talking about excel 2010 those who are working in excel 2010 they are having this much of the cells in it now active cell the cell with a dark border around it is called an active cell this cell is active cell as it is having a 
border around it. This is called an active cell. When you will going to write any value, when you will going to select any cell, that cell will be black border. वो cell black border से boundary black border color की हो जाती है. That is called an active cell, and the name and the address of the cell will be defined in the name box, which is on the top where C five is written. You can see. Now, how to enter a data in a cell? How we can enter a value? We can enter any special character. We can enter any number. Whatever you want to enter in a cell, how you can enter it? Click in the cell where you want to enter the data. The cell becomes active. Whenever you want to select any data, click on that cell, and that cell will become active. Ah. Uh, as there will be a black bordered boundary around it this means that the that cell is an active cell now what will be the second step you can type the data in that you can type any number you can type any alphabet you can type any special symbol whatever you want to type you can type in that cell step 3 press the enter key to confirm your data entry after entering the value whatever you want to type in that cell press the enter key that will show you that the data is confirmed whatever the data you have entered it is stored in that cell the cell below the current cell becomes active cell as soon as you will going to press the enter key the cell next below below matlab niche the cell below to that cell will become an active cell that will have a boundary around it now we are having the two buttons accept button and the cancel button we will going to study what these buttons tell you on the ms excel they have shown you in the figure also where the formula bar is there fx is written this is your formula bar and there are two signs first is cross sign which tells you the cancel button and second one is the right sign this means this is your accept button the accept button is used to keep the data that is entered and is equivalent to pressing the enter key if you are typing any you are typing any data in any cell you can press this tick button also or you can press the enter key this means that the uh, the data you have stored in that cell is confirmed you can take the help of this tick box also tick also or you can press the enter key both these are options can be taken the now next one we are having the cancel button this cross is your cancel button this is used to reject the data that you entered in the cell if you have entered any data in the cell and you don't want to save that you want don't want to enter that values in that cell you need not to press delete key or the backspace key what you can do you can press this cross button so that whatever the value you have entered that will going to delete by itself you can also use the escape to cancel the data entry if you don't want to enter the data either you can press this cross button that is your cancel button or you can press the escape key so that the value will not be stored in that cell thank you class please go through with the tutorial and if you face any problem note it down somewhere write down somewhere whenever we will going to have the virtual session of the chapter 2 in the coming week i will going to discuss the problems with you and i will even teach you the every topic okay class thank you